Hello, I'm Howard Spence. I'm a local attorney here in the Greater Lansing area, and I'm semi-retired. What you are about to see is a video recording which was taken within the last year at a student expulsion hearing held before the Okemos Public School District uh, Board where my client, uh, Timothy Stewart, was being expelled from Okemos Public Schools for misbehavior or violation of rules and standards of the local school district. At least that is what was alleged in the notice that was received. Actually, I am happy that the mother of this student and uh, the young man himself wanted to share this story and to provide this video so that people who are similarly situated to Tim Stewart uh, can have an idea of what they face when they go to a public school expulsion hearing. Most of these hearings are uh, held in private, which is required by law unless the uh, student and the student's parent or guardian waives that uh, right to a private closed hearing. And in this case, uh, Timothy's mother did waive that right to a private hearing for the reason that she believed that her son was being uh, treated in a disparate manner by the Okemos Public School District uh, in large part because he came from a single parent family that was black uh, as you will see Tim is black and that uh, she was happy and proud that her son was uh, able to go to school uh, in the Okemos School District uh, and she was concerned that uh, he was not treated fairly and that other students of color or of lower socioeconomic class were not being treated fairly by the Okemos School District uh, in terms of how they were regarded as perhaps second-class students or problems and that uh, the uh, educators in the Okemos Public School System didn't have the patience or the training or the will to work with these students. Uh, for those of you who may not know, Okemos Public Schools is one of the uh, preeminent uh, school public school systems in the state of Michigan. Uh, its students excel. Many of the students who go there are the uh, children of uh, well-known, well-heeled uh, members of the community, including college professors at Michigan State University, doctors, lawyers, uh, people uh, who are well off and have long histories of success. And that success has also shown up in terms of their willingness to pay uh, high amounts of property tax to maintain some of the best public schools that are available perhaps in the nation. However, uh, the focus of the uh, school system uh, is on excellence and, and sometimes when you are focusing on excellence uh, you neglect or uh, disregard uh, the needs of students who may not meet your expectations of excellence. Not everybody is on the tennis team, uh, not everybody can go to uh, Harvard or Yale when they graduate, uh, so there is a, a concern not only in Okemos, but throughout uh, our nation, in fact, that average students, typical students, especially students of color, young black males, young Hispanic males, uh, may not be getting uh, the encouragement and the understanding uh, that they need to actually uh, perform at the best level that they can and have the success of completing high school. I'm a member of the uh, Greater Lansing Executive Committee of the uh, American Civil Liberties Union and one of the major concerns and projects of the ACLU uh, is in fact that many of our children uh, are being robbed of their futures by being uh, involved in an educational process which is characterized as being uh, the school to prison pipeline and many times if we don't work hard to make sure our students are successful to uh, achieve the, the victory of, of success in uh, the school system, uh, then it's almost a given that they may end up 
uh, in our prison systems or otherwise uh, not contributing to society in the future the way that they could or should. And so when I was approached by the mother uh, of this young man uh, to handle this hearing, uh, I was sensitive to that concern and uh, I have to confess I uh, had never done uh, a public school expulsion hearing before uh, and I wasn't even really aware of the process that would be used until the last minute and uh, so uh, the videos that you see will show a hearing and, and I have to apologize in advance uh, that you know my performance may not have been uh, stellar uh, because I was in an area of administrative law uh, where I had not uh, had the experience uh, to handle the hearing. But I'm, I'm somewhat uh, uh, encouraged or satisfied by the fact that the attorney in this uh, series of videos who represented the Oklahoma School Board, who was an expert in the area, uh, also seemed to have some confusion about the due process uh, that was to be required, the procedure that was to be followed. Uh, and this shows up in the advice that she gives to the members of the Okemos Public School uh, Board uh, who were responsible to conduct this hearing. And uh, one of the values or reasons that I, I participated in this videotaping, which was actually done at the uh, request of the mother and she provided the videographer, uh, was that this could be a a, a learning tool not only for me but for others who might have a public service interest uh, or a professional interest in this area of law which is protecting the rights of minors in the educational setting and uh, it's still a, a study in flux uh, an area of the law in flux uh, it has approached the uh, uh, level of being a, a national area of concern the uh, Federal Department of uh, Public uh, Education, uh, Department of Education, has issued guidelines and statements, policy statements, which uh, emphasize their growing concern that across this nation, not just in Oakmus or the greater Lansing area, students are being kicked out of schools too quickly. Uh, in some instances, they are being expelled when there are other uh, more appropriate uh, ways to deal with uh, behavior and and uh, uh, issues that arise in the school setting and many times people don't realize that uh, mistakes that kids make and certainly when you look at this video you'll see that uh, uh, Mr. Stewart is is not a complete angel but at the same time uh, there are also some culture bound uh, issues raised here uh, in terms of his behavior, things he said in the school setting in Okemos, which uh, uh, a predominantly white, uh, higher educated, uh, middle class uh, uh, professional staff uh, may have mistaken or taken uh, in an inappropriate way or certainly in a way that uh, the student did not mean it to be uh, uh, received. Uh, sometimes when you find kids who are speaking uh, as they do uh, to their friends, uh, in the current uh, adolescent uh, uh, antibiotics types of uh, 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 discourse, you'll find that things they say uh, offend uh, older people or people with middle class backgrounds uh, when they weren't really intended to do that. And in fact, other younger people uh, understand what was being said or attempted to be communicated. So as you look at this video, I and I appreciate your taking time to do that. Uh, I want you to understand that uh, you need to not only put yourself in the position of the educators at the Oklahoma's Public High School who were trying to uh, get this kid expelled, but you also need to uh, put yourself, if possible, in the uh, position of uh, single parents who are raising kids at uh, levels that are, are not uh, uh, at a high level socioeconomically or uh, that are culturally different. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, videos are not complete. Uh, the uh, mother arranged to have them videotaped by a friend and indeed I, I performed as an attorney here on a pro bono basis uh, and 
uh, the, the hearing itself went quite a long time. Uh, uh, you'll see uh, some excerpts or the major portions of the actual hearing on the record, but there was a substantial part of the hearing, especially toward the end, uh, that was not actually recorded uh, because uh, the capacity of the videographer's uh, equipment uh, uh, was surpassed. Uh, this hearing process started, I think, at 6, and it didn't end until almost uh, 11 or 12 at night, and uh, even with breaks, you can understand that's uh, a lot of graphics. Uh, the videos which are here for you to uh, review and digest accumulate to only about 45 minutes, and uh, uh, the part that I, I regret was not captured was the end part where uh, after the presentation, which basically was the school district administrator, the high school principal and her assistant principal, trying to explain uh, why they were uh, having this kid expelled and they were having difficulty going a step further to explain why expulsion was the appropriate remedy as compared to something uh, else. And uh, uh, that is uh, interesting in and of itself. These hearings held before lay boards, which are not judges uh, or trained uh, in the law or, or in many cases uh, the members of the uh, school boards uh, don't even really have uh, a very uh, good knowledge of uh, academic uh, teaching, uh, educational procedures and processes. Uh, so uh, as you look at these videos, you're going to, to see some interesting things, I think, in terms of the human interaction between the board members uh, at the Oklahoma Public Schools. Uh, and this showed up especially uh, in the part that regrettably is, is not captured at the end, where the uh, uh, school board members who are used to being able to uh, go into a private session even without the student at the end of a an expulsion hearing uh, and deliberate among themselves were forced because of the Open Meetings Act and the uh, demand of the mother that it be a public hearing to do their deliberations and discussions uh, publicly while we watched and uh, unfortunately you may not get a chance to get the full flavor of the fact that there was a considerable amount of uh, animosity among and between uh, some of the board members about uh, the philosophy of kicking this kid out. Uh, as you look at the video, uh, one of the uh, board members who is a um, black person, professional person, uh, Felix Sharp, I, I, I believe is his name, uh, uh, took an approach of why are we kicking this kid out? Are we treating him fairly? Do we treat others like this? Are we actually focusing on getting rid of him and similar students because of the fact that they may be of color, that they may uh, not be of our socioeconomic uh, background or, or our friendships? And there was some heated debate, uh, including some personal animosity and, and things said that I laugh about in retrospect, but which were really, in my opinion, unprofessional criticisms of each other. And uh, uh, as you look at this, uh, you, you need to understand that in administrative law, when you deal with these lay boards, whether it's, uh, you know, a licensing board or a public uh, uh, school board, uh, you're dealing with people who are pretty much at the mercy uh, of uh, the chief administrator in the agency, which in this case was the superintendent of schools who uh, participated as a part of the uh, hearing process, and their attorneys. And in this case, the uh, Oklahoma School Board uh, did retain a, a very good attorney with experience in this area. And uh, throughout the hearing that you do see, and certainly once we went into the uh, deliberation portion, the confusion and lack of understanding of the members of this school board uh, uh, became obvious, and it, it appears even at points that the uh, 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 confusion rose to the level that the uh, uh, attorney for the school board uh, may have been uh, stating things that appeared to be contradictory or were overly legalistic and was and were not really focused on dealing with the issue of what is uh, uh, in the best interest of this kid or even what is in the best interest of the educational process uh, there. 
in the Okuma School District. I will let you know in advance uh, that uh, Mr. Stewart was not expelled uh, because uh, out of the four voting members of the uh, school board who participated, uh, uh, there was a different approach and consideration. Uh, the two black uh, board members uh, ended up not being convinced that there needed to be an expulsion in this case. The two white, uh, white Latino uh, uh, members of the board uh, strongly favored and were agitated by the fact that they were not able to get uh, an expulsion uh, as I perceive it and as I believe you will perceive, perceive it when you look at this, this video uh, package. And you know, it's, it's somewhat sad from my perspective that when we're dealing with our kids and our future, uh, that this type of situation, whether or not a kid should be expelled from school, uh, uh, ends up, uh, you know, devolving to the point of an adversarial process. Uh, when you look at the, uh, uh, the video and hear what the high school principal and her assistants say, you know, at some point in time, they became agitated and they became strictly in the prosecutorial uh, function of not what is in the best interest of this kid, but let's get this kid. Let's win. Let's prove that we were right. And so it's not a persuasive type situation when you're dealing with uh, the administration. It's more of a defense. And, and if you challenge that, if you do request a, a hearing on an expulsion or other type of discipline uh, as permitted by Michigan and federal law, then uh, the administrators tend to jail in their positions and suddenly they have to be right and they expend a lot of energy uh, on being right. And when you look at this video and see some of the things that the administrator said, uh, which I hope were in error or not being very familiar with what was in the file with this particular individual, they even uh, get to the point where they are misstating or misrepresenting or withholding information that favors the position taken by the student. And so that I think underscores the fact that this is a very important area for young lawyers and others who are interested in advocacy for our kids uh, be aware of. And it's my understanding that these uh, videos uh, may be used in training programs that are offered uh, as a part of the uh, school to prison pipeline uh, here in Central Michigan uh, and by the ACLU and by the uh, uh, advocacy program uh, offered at Michigan State University in their law school and elsewhere to uh, uh, train young college students and professionals of the future in terms of how to be an advocate for the disadvantaged, especially in the uh, uh, educational setting because the consequences for uh, expulsions and uh, actions taken against young people uh, at that point in their life when they may be acting stupid and when they may be uh, making mistakes can have long-term consequences uh, for their future. So I hope that you can uh, look at this and you can have questions. Uh, I have to give you the caveat in retrospect as I review this that there are aspects of this hearing that I was inexperienced in and I would have handled differently uh, and would in the future if I, uh, if I get that opportunity. But uh, aside from the fact that the advocacy you see may not be the best, I think it's a good educational experience. And so I, uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you have questions, uh, feel free to uh, uh, contact me uh, or, or, or make comments or posts perhaps on my Facebook, uh, which is uh, howard.spence.921. And uh, I'd be happy to interact with you. Uh, discuss it with your local school officials. Uh, if you are uh, involved in a situation like that, uh, there is help to be had uh, in terms of student advocacy. Uh, and uh, uh, perhaps uh, we can get you uh, associated with people who have an interest in protecting the rights of you and or your children. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're not too bored. And again, I apologize. It's long uh, and it's not made for TV. It's made for uh, professionals in training to be able to look at it and say, 
why did he do that? Why did she say that? Why did they, in fact, even take the case this way? And uh, uh, so again, enjoy it and uh, uh, pass on the word.